Hi everybody! Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make a pendant using nothing more than a tin can lid. That's right, just a lid off of a can. And I made this and also this with just a lid off of a tin can. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need for this project is a can. And you're going to take the lid off the can. Now, depending on what kind of can you use, some cans have like a, a silver obviously on the top and usually it's stamped with the date of expiration of the food that you're getting your lid off of. And the other side is like a nice gold. So sometimes you don't have to paint it. But other times you do. Now I'm going to show you a few things that you can do and how I made this pendant and this pendant so you can have a nice statement uh, choker or necklace. And when you remove it, now you might have some sharp edges, but if you do, that's not going to be a problem because handle it carefully and then use either a Dremel or some uh, a nail file a, a metal one or a metal file and smooth out the edges but before you do anything make sure you wash the lid thoroughly so it doesn't end up smelling like your food or have any food remnants on it you're going to wash it really well with warm water and soap and let it air out and then you're going to want to sand it to smooth out the edges now you're either going to want it keep it full and round like this one or I'm going to show you my next one. You're going to want to cut it in half like this one and I'm going to explain how I made the both of these. Now for this one I had to obviously cut it in half so what you're going to want to have around you other than the tick can lid and a dremel or some not nail file or metal file to smooth out the edges you're going you're going to need a metal cutter or tin snips or something sharp that can cut cleanly through the tin can lid the metal is usually tin so it's more flexible what i did with this one is i took a tin can lid and I bent it this way and I bent it that way and I kept bending it back and forth and then I just filed out the uneven portion because I didn't have anything sharp enough to cut it in half. Now that could be a little messy and could warp it so that's not the ideal way you should do it but I had to improvise because I didn't have the proper tools so that's the way it was with that one. The other thing I had to do was I couldn't punch a hole through it. Now ideally you might want to get something to punch a hole on either side so that you could put jump rings and hang it and then maybe a few holes down here so you can hang like beads or the little metal uh, fringy things that I forgot what they called <laughs> or if you want to hang chime uh, or if you want to hang charms from it, beads, charms, whatever. And it would be better if you had something that can drill a hole through it. But again, I live in an apartment. I don't have a garage anymore where I had all my tools. I don't have a drill. I didn't have anything in my Dremel. Was not strong enough to go through it. So if you do have that, that would be great to have as another uh, tool for this. Especially if you're going to make them to give as gifts or to sell. But if you're just going to make it for yourself, then you don't need to do that. Now I'm going to show you the back. So the back of that, I left like this. See, the back is usually silver and the front is usually a gold. But look, you're going to paint both sides. I did this on purpose to show you the back. Obviously didn't have the right tool to drill a hole through it. So I had pendant bells and this one has little heart shaped pendant bells. I don't know if you can see. The little heart shapes. I don't know if you can see the little heart shapes, see? And you know that could be the front too if you painted it nice because they're little heart shapes. The decorative. You can find all kinds of pendant bells and they have a big enough hole in it that they can go through. So you could certainly do that for that but if you wanted to hang anything on the bottom it would look too messy with a bunch of pendant bells. 
<laughs> you know, but um, you could do that too if it's just for you. But I would recommend that if you're going to make them to give as gifts or to sell, that you would get a drill or something that can drill holes you know, where you would hang it and then a few on the bottom so you can hang beads or whatever off of it. Tassels like this, little tassels. Not obviously the long ones, but that would look really nice. So for this particular one, I had to cut it in half and then I glued the pendant bales on it. So the first what you're going to do is if you're going to make the half if you're going to cut it in half, make sure that after you cut it, that you smooth out the edges because it will be rough and sharp and you don't want to cut yourself, so make sure you're careful. And then after you smooth all that out, then you could go ahead and wipe it down and then paint it. Now I used nail polish, just flat, just nail polish, nothing special, nothing fancy. Uh, you can certainly use paint. I was thinking of doing a copper, but I have so many necklaces and earrings that I painted with that metallic uh, copper paint that I bought from the craft store. And I love it, but I didn't want to make everything that color. I wanted a different color. So I just used nail polish. And if you can see, I mean the light kind of, but I did two colors, okay. So I'm going to put this on so you can see it while I'm talking to you and then I'll put the other one back on. Now the colors I used, I believe this says, the colors I used for this particular pendant were these that I got from Five Below. Now if you don't have a Five Below by you or you don't know what a Five Below is, it's almost like a dollar store. It's five dollars and below basically everything. And these were like 68 cents a piece and they're called Funky Fingers. And this one's like an iridescent purpley black blue and this one's like a tealish blue iridescent and i mix these two together first i put the lighter color all over it then i added some of this all over it then i went back with this and it just kept blending and blending until it got a nice coat now if you're going to do this you're obviously going to do both sides so what you're going to do if that's what you want. I mean, if you're going to make it as a gift or if you're going to make it to sell, you're going to want to do both sides. But after you do each side, let them dry thoroughly because you're going to kind of cake these on and it's going to have like a texture. Now keep in mind, tin can lids usually have that swirl, which makes it fun if you're going to fill that whole thing with beads like if you're going to just paint it one color and put beads around and around like one in the middle and all around you can paint uh, you can kind of make like a mandala so they do have the grooves but when you kind of cake on the paint it kind of covers those grooves so that's up to you but I really blended these two well and it made it thick and I let each side dry thoroughly. Now it's not going to dry in 5-10 minutes like your nails. You want to give it a good 30 minutes for both sides because it's going to be tacky. Once it's done, now if you, I would recommend you find an object to drill and I would drill before you paint. So if you have a tool that you can drill a hole through, go ahead and make you, where you want to drill. If you're just going to drill it here and here, then go ahead and do that. And then if you're also going to make a few holes here on the bottom so you can hang beads or whatnot from it, then go ahead and do that before you paint it, okay? And make sure it's smooth. And then um, go ahead and do your painting and make sure that both sides of your pendant is completely dry, not even tacky, okay? Otherwise you'll ruin it. Now you can add glitter to it. You can design it any way you want with whatever colors. I'm just telling you what I did for mine and what colors this was. And then I used, once it was all dry, I got some pendant bales. Now because I didn't have a tool to drill it, I had to use pendant bales that I just showed you. And I glued it with my E6000 glue and I used a toothpick and I just put very little E6000 glue on the head of the toothpick because you don't need a lot 
and you put very little on the back of the bale and then you hold it and you're going to want to face it down with your bales facing up at you and you're going to want to position it. Now the reason why I recommend E6000 glue over a glue gun is the glue gun tends to dry and then when it uh, like dry rots your bales will fall off. That happened to me many times when I wanted a quick fix and I highly don't recommend that. Luckily it was just for me. It wasn't something I sold or gave as a gift because that would be embarrassing. <laughs> and you want a higher quality. I would use the E6000 glue. All you need is a dot on the tip of the toothpick and you put a little on the pendant bale and put your pendant bales on. And the other thing that's good about using the E6000 glue is when you use that, you have a little leeway before it really uh, sticks, adheres to your item, because what it does is uh, it allows you to have some room to move around, because when you use glue from the glue gun, the minute you put it there, it's like instant, and then once you pick it up, it's a little sticky, you gotta peel it all off, and you know, it's just a, an inconvenient mess where this gives you a little leeway and about 20 to 30 minutes to move things around if you see something's crooked. And then leave it alone. Uh, typically 24 hours for it to dry when you're using E6000 glue. So you might want to, if you're using bales and not drilling a hole, you might want to make that your last step, okay? And then you could leave it sit all overnight and in the morning it'll be nice. So you can paint these multicolors or do what I did with the two colors. And I, all I used, I'm going to take this off so you can see, I used some of those acrylic gemstones, okay? And I'm going to show you them. I have some clear ones in here. I separate them and the rest have different colors. Now I could have made it more colorful, um, but I used the light blue on that one. And this is what they look like. They come in different shapes, okay? This is like a light pink. Ooh, this one's like a heart shape and it's purple. And see the metal at the back is like a little metal, but they're kind of plasticky. They're just acrylics. And this one's a little pink. And they have like pyramid shapes. And you've seen me use them. And I've used them in crafts throughout my house. So I put light blue over that. Now if I would have put the white, it would have looked a little more noticeable. I didn't do it. I kind of wanted it to just be a little design element, but not to overtake the whole pendant because I felt that the pendant was bold enough in color that it really didn't need too much, but you can do whatever you want. I mean, you design them how you like, and I use that, and that's what it looked like, and it does add like a little sparkle to it without being too much. And you can put this on a choker, a chain, one of those rope chokers, or anything you want. And that's all I did with it. And I love it. And I like the color, how it turned out. And that's it. That's that one. And for this particular one, I left the lid intact. All I did was wash it. I dremeled around to make it smooth. And when you paint it, be sure that you... Uh, paint the sides as well. That helps to keep it smoother as well. And then all I did was I again, like I said, I didn't have anything to drill a hole through it, so I used a pendant bale on here. I painted it black. All I used was this black nail polish and my silver glitter nail polish. But and that's what I used around the edge. So I'm gonna take it off, you can't really tell with the glare. It's, it's like a big statement necklace, it's big. It's the size of a can lid. See, that's what the back looks like. Again, I didn't do the back on purpose. Like the back is usually the top of the can where it's silver has the expiration date stamped and the front is like a nice gold, which you can leave. But I painted it black and once I painted it flat black, I went around the edges with the silver glitter nail polish. And I did that a few times, gave it a few coats, and let that completely dry. Once it was completely dry, I took one of these things. These are what you would normally put on top of a bead. And that's what they look like. Like whoop, bead caps. That's all it is. You know, you put this on top of it and you could put that also when you're making tassels. So I, I had a, diff, a few different things I was going to put in the center. 
laid things on top of it to see how I want it once the paint was completely dry. This is something I did because it's black and silver and I was going to put that in the center. And then I was going to put different color, brightly colored stuff around, but I decided to keep it like a black and silver type thing. So what I did was I put that and with a toothpick again and my E6000 glue, I went around the edges of the bead cap, placed it in the center, uh, and then I put these odd shaped clear acrylic and I like the way it was. And thankfully, with the E6000 glue, you only have to use a little that you apply to the back of the acrylics. And you can use beads if you want. But what I like about the E6000 glue is that it gives me time to maneuver. Because once I did it and then I walked away, I noticed one was crooked. And this was like 20 minutes after. But I was able to move it slightly. And that's easy. It's just a tin can lid and nail polish. How affordable is that? And most of you already have that stuff in your house. And I, like I said, I put the um, pendant bell on the back. And if you did it, of course, you'd paint the front and back. But I purposely left this to show you. So that's it. Now, hopefully soon I'll get a drill so I can drill a hole and make a whole bunch. I mean, it's endless because I, oh, I have tons of cans. So once I open them, now I don't use the ones with the flip lid because once you flip it, it kind of bends it out of shape and it messes it up. So I only use the ones that I open with my can opener. It's like a big statement. Now you can put it on a choker or a long chain where it would be down here instead. Um, I just like the way it looks. I love that I could just use tin cans. Now you could also cut this smaller and make little earrings and you know the other thing you can do with these is you can make a bunch of the big ones like this and make it like a wall decoration um, they make great wall hangings so you can use them for a number of things not just for jewelry and it's quick it's easy and it's affordable so what better thing you could do with things that you already have lying around your house so i just wanted to share that with you i like to look for projects that are fun and easy to do because not just for the novice but for the beginner in making jewelry also ones that are affordable because let's face it everything is really expensive these days and when you're making something and you're crafting, you need a lot of extra supplies. Why not use things you have around your house? You might as well utilize that. And it helps with recycling. And I really love it. And remember to paint both sides. Uh, remember to get a drill and a sharp cutter. And just be creative. Like I said, you don't have to go out and buy expensive paint. I use what I have. I only had the copper paint. And I didn't want to go out and spend money that I didn't really have to paint, uh, to get some paint. And nail polish is cheaper. And you don't have to use expensive nail polish. You go to the dollar store, five below, Walmart. Just get the cheap stuff. It works just as well. Hope you like that fast, easy, and affordable project. And I hope that you make some. Go ahead and get crafting. So I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.